Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to build something called a 10 meter dipole antenna. Now, this is useful for any people who are ham radio operators and would like to build an antenna for their ham radio. So, I have recently obtained my ham radio license, and because I have obtained my ham radio license, I've purchased a 10 meter ham radio. Now, this ham radio can't do anything without an antenna. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build the antenna for your ham radio. I will show you how to build this custom power supply that mounts to your desk in, uh, in the next video. So let's get started. Now antennas, as you may usually see them, are long pieces of wire, or some antennas look like this. Now antennas are the most vital part for ham radio because they are what lets the actual signal from the radio propagate throughout the earth to get to other ham radios. So what antenna I'm going to be using is called a dipole. Now a dipole is where you have an insulator up here and then you have two wires coming down of equal length. Now this length needs to be calculated based on the frequency of your ham radio and what you're operating at. So in my case, I'm operating a 10 meter ham radio, which is approximately 28 to 30 megahertz. So this is the 10 meter band. Now to calculate the length of each wire in your dipole, you'll need to divide the number 234 by the operating frequency of your ham radio, which in my case, I'm going to say is around 29 megahertz. So I'll input this into the calculator, 234 divided by 28.5, and I get 8.21 um, feet. So this means that each section of the dipole antenna needs to be 8.21 feet. Now this is what will make your antenna function the best. Because if you have this length that's not perfect, your SWR value will rise. And this is bad because that means that more power will be reflected back into your radio through the coax cable than will actually be propagated through the air. Now, how you will wire this dipole antenna to your radio is you'll need to have coax. Now, in my case, I'm using 75 ohm coax because most dipole antennas are 75 ohms. Now, this coax has an outer lead, which is made of um, frayed wire, and it has an inner lead. Now, this inner lead goes to one side of the dipole, and this outer ground goes to the other side. This allows you not to use a ground inside your dipole antenna configuration. Now, this antenna will allow your um, ham radio to communicate over long distances and work very good. So, let's see how I did this antenna. As you can see, I first ran a piece of coax cable from my antenna through a hole in the wall. Now, you can just drill this hole in the wall with any normal drill bit and just drill it all the way outside. Then you can feed your coax through. This coax will be connected to your radio. You can then take the piece of wire that's coming out of your wall and run it all the way up to your roof. Now, the best place for your antenna to be is someplace very high because this allows the radio signals to go farther. Now, as you can see, I have placed my dipole antenna right up here on the chimney. Now, this in the center is a ceramic insulator and it has exactly 8.2 feet of 26 gauge steel wire coming down to another insulator down here. Now this small ceramic insulator has two pieces of the steel wire tied around it so that, that way they are not touching. Now each part of the coax is soldered to a different wire coming out from a different direction. Now this coax is hanging directly from a piece of 2x4. This piece of 2x4 was bolted 
to another piece of 2x4, so that way it is inside an L configuration, and it has a piece of rope holding it tight to the chimney. Now, the piece of coax is firmly secured in this end of the piece of 2x4, and the coax cable runs all the way down, down the roof, and back to my room. This configuration of your coax cable hooking up to your antenna is a very good way because it does not require you to drill any holes in the stucco, which is a pain. Well, at the end of the 8 feet of the steel wire that's actually tied to the coax, there's another ceramic insulator to tie the antenna to another piece of steel wire that goes to a mounting place. Now we can't have these two pieces of steel wire touching because that would create a longer antenna which would make it not resonate as good at the frequency we're using. So this ceramic insulator serves to isolate the two pieces of steel wire. Attached to this insulator by wrapping it around and tying it on. Now this end of the steel wire is anchored to this piece of conduit that runs to the solar panels on my roof. The anchor for the other side of this antenna is anchored to the satellite dish over here. So this new antenna works awesome with my 10 meter ham radio. In my next video, I will reveal my ham radio call sign and give you a little demonstration of my ham radio setup along with how it's set up and how everything works together, including this awesome custom 12 volt power supply that powers everything. So for now, stay tuned for my next video. And good luck building your 10 meter ham radio antenna. Thanks for watching.